Sessions. High School Sports on WTKM FM Hartford. Back here in West Bend, week four of the high school football season featuring your Orioles of Hartford Union against the undefeated West Bend East Suns. Getting ready for the kickoff for the second half. The Suns lead this one 21 to 10. Hartford got within two, uh, 11 points after a 40 yard field goal by RJ Thomas with 20 seconds left in the second quarter brought us to the current score. And that was a courtesy of a interception by Dominic Cifaldi that set up the Orioles at first and 10 inside the East 30 yard line. So East will get the ball to start the second half. Hartford getting ready to kick it off. 21-10 Suns over the Orioles, ready for the second half. Let's see what adjustments these teams made as we get ready for the second half. And the kick is up, and it's away. It's a high kick. Going to be fielded low, but it's botched at the six-yard line. Suns pit, do pick it up. They get some space across the 20, out to the 25-yard line. That was almost pretty disastrous for East, but they avoided the, the, avoided the disaster and were able to get the ball up to the 25-yard line. We miscues on special teams on both sides tonight have really been uh, an issue tonight. Whether it's not being able to field a kick cleanly or um, bad snaps, uh, having a kick blocked. Uh, yeah, both sides have really struggled in special teams in the, uh, here so far tonight. So the East Suns going left to right here on your radio dial or on cross your computer screen or your mobile device. One receiver to the left. Carlson handoff up the middle. Not much there for the Suns. Maybe out to Caleb the 27 on the, uh, on the carry. Caleb Shep with the ball carrier. It's about three yards on that first down carry, so it's going to set up second and seven for the Suns. Another thing that's really been that really stands out from the first half in terms from the stat standpoint is Harford's just one of seven on third down, while East, on the other hand, is three of six. He's taking a long time in the huddle here. They may not get this play off. They may have to call a timeout. The officials mark 10 seconds left. And Carlson's still not under center. There's confusion. They're gonna, East is going to have to call a timeout or they're going to get a delayed game penalty. And that's what they're going to do. A lot of confusion by East coming out of the huddle of that play. That's a tough take, uh, timeout to take just one minute into the second half of this one. Just a lot of confusion on offense about who was supposed to be where. So to avoid the delay of game penalty, the Suns just take their first time out. Just one minute into the th third quarter. Thanks to our sponsors for supporting Hartford Orioles football. They are Forte Bank, Zern Building Products in Allenton, Watertown, Cedarburg and Franklin, RS Semler and Associates Insurance, Eastside Lumber Company, and Schnorenberg's Floor Covering. 11 minutes left here in the third quarter, just underway here in the second half. The Suns lead this one 21 to 10 on the Orioles. East going for a 4 0 start in 2 0 in conference. After tonight, East will host Whitefish Bay, then they go to Homestead, and then at, back here at home against Cedarburg. For Hartford after tonight, they will host Homestead next week. Again, that's on Thursday. Game you can hear on 104.9 WTKM and online at WTKMnews.com. All right, here we go. Second and seven. Carl Center Center, I formation, one receiver to the right. There's the snap. Handoff is to the up back. Out past the 30, maybe to the 31-yard line. And Cutler Schmidt was the ball carrier for the Suns. Got a couple yards on that play, out to the 33-yard line. Well, they're going to mark him at the 32. So it's going to be third and about three for the Suns. And three of six so far are the Suns on third down. Again, eye formation here for the Suns. One receiver to the left. Carlson under center. Here's the snap. Hand off. Fake is to the up back. Now pitch to the right. Cutting back upfield is Suns. Cross the 35. And that was Caleb Shep. Leans across the 35-yard line to the 36. That's enough for a first down. That's a conversion on third down. Four of seven are the Suns now on that on third down. So first and ten for the Suns at the 36-yard line of the Suns. 
Approaching now 10 minutes left here in the third quarter. 21-10, Suns on the Orioles. Another I formation for East. Carlson under center. Snap. Handoff is to the back. Over to the left side. Breaks it, bounces out to the left side. There's a lot of space out there. Across the 45, 50, into Orioles territory. And Caleb Shep, the ball carrier. That's a gain of close to 20 yards on that second down play. And that is going to be another first down for the Suns, getting across the midfield stripe to the 47 of Hartford. And now the Suns again are starting to march down the field. We talked about it in the pregame, how big East is up front, they, and they're really good at running the football. We have seen that in a lot of spaces here tonight. And eye formation for the Suns. Carlson under center. Here's the snap. Handoff is to the up back. Cross to the 45-yard line. Cutler Schmidt, the ball carrier. Cutler Schmidt was the ball carrier for the Suns. They're actually going to mark him short of the 45, so a gain of about one on that first down. So it's going to set up second and nine for the Suns on the plus side of the 50 for East. Coming up on 8.50 in counting left here in the third quarter. And Suns lead 21-10 on the Orioles. This is the first possession of the second half. Receiver split to the left. Again, I formation. Carlson under center. There's the snap. Handoff to the back. Bounces out to the right side. Yeah, Caleb Shep gets a couple yards on that play. Across to the 44-yard line, gain of about two. Sets up third and seven for the Suns. East four of seven on third down so far here tonight. Carlson getting the play from his coach, Jeff Rondorf, here on the, on the near sideline. East breaks the hollow. It's third and seven for the Suns. One receiver to each side of the formation. Carlson in the shotgun with two backs next to him. Here's the snap. Fake the handoff. Rolls to the right. Carlson looking for a receiver. He's got three defenders on him. He gets away from him. And Carlson's able to escape the, the pressure in the backfield. Turn it upfield. Maybe got back to the line of scrimmage or even a yard. Either way, that's going to come well short of the first down for East. It's going to be a decision time for Rondorf and the Suns if they want to either punt it with 7.30 left here in the third quarter or if they want to try and go for it here near midfield. And it looks like Carlson's going to go back into the huddle. So it looks like the East Suns are going to tr go for it. Officially, it's fourth and six for the West Bend East Suns. Two receivers to the left, one to the right. Carlson in shotgun, one, one back behind him. Now Carlson jump, drops back into punt formation in just a little pooch punt. Nobody's back there for Hartford to field it, so East is going to get down there relatively easy, and they'll, dump, and they'll down the football inside the 20-yard line at the 19-yard line. So a good stop uh, for Hartford on defense. They have had to give up a couple of first downs, but they were able to stiffen up and force the uh, punt, and now Hartford will get the ball for the first time here in the second half. So 6.59 left here in the third quarter. 21-10, Suns over the Orioles. Orioles getting the ball for the first time here in the second half. First and 10 at the 19. Pass is deflected at the line of scrimmage. So Connor Ford was looking to his left. Looked like he was trying to hit, hit Reed Genders on the left side, but the ball was batted at the line of scrimmage, and the ball hit the ground um, safely. So it's second and 10 now for the Orioles. 6.54 left in the third quarter. 21-10, Suns on the Orioles. And you heard earlier, Nicolay is leading Homestead. That's, a, that's an important one in the North Shore picture. Now here's the handoff. Off to the left side is Orioles. And get to the 20 on the left side. Didn't get a good look to see who might have had the ball, but it looks like it got across the 21. Looks like it was Genders that had the ball carry, so he gets about a yard, sets up third down. One of seven are the Orioles, and they're quickly to the line of scrimmage. One receiver to each side. Quarterback. And wide open over the middle is Hartford's number 88. That is Sean Winkleman. 
good piss, pass and catch for the Orioles, and it's going to be first down. He was left wide open over the middle of field. Nobody picked up Winkleman over the middle, so he was able to make the catch turn and get the first down. And it's now first and 10 at the 34 for the Orioles. One receiver to each side of the formation. Here's the snap. Handoff up the middle. Nope, it's a keeper by the quarterback. He's under pressure, and he's going to be brought down behind the line of scrimmage. That was Cleggie's, the ball carrier, and the quarterback for the, for the Orioles. Dropped at the 30, so a loss of four yards on that first and 10 play. 540 left here in the third quarter. Suns lead 21 and 10 on the Orioles. Now second and 14 at the 30. Same formation for the Orioles. Cleggie's shotgun formation. Gets the snap. Looks to his right. They'll dump pass over the middle. That's to Winkleman. Close to the 40 yard line. Gain of about 10 on that second and 14 play. It's going to set up third and four for the Orioles at the 40 yard line. So two of eight are the Orioles on third down here tonight. Riding down to five minutes left here in the third quarter. Suns lead the Orioles 21 to 10. So now Hartford comes out with three receivers on the right, one to the left, one back behind. Quarterback in shotgun formation. Here's Cleggie rolling out to his right. Pumps, looks, gets rid of it, hits as he's thrown, and it's complete on the far sideline. Turns upfield to the 40. And making the reception on the far sideline for the Orioles is Austin Miner. Gets it to the 38 yard line. That's a big 25 yard gain on first down, or on third down, excuse me, for the Orioles. And the Orioles quickly back to the line. They're going to show a full house backfield. There's the snap. Handoff up the middle for the, for the Orioles. Good gain there on first down. There we go. So second down and five after the five-yard run by the Orioles. Moving quickly in the offense of the Orioles. Handoff up the middle right to the line of scrimmage, and I think that's about it. And a flag comes in at the end of the play. Curious to see what this flag will be. It's right thrown right at the pile after the play. This might be in the area of a face mask. And it is a face mask penalty on the Suns. Now the question is if it's a five or of the 15 variety. Well, we'll just uh, wait here to see what the officials mark off, but it is a penalty on the Suns. Still kind of waiting for the officials to mark it off. And it was a five-yard face mask, but either way, that should be a first down, and it is. So it's a first down for the Orioles after the five-yard run plus the five-yard face mask after the play or during the at the at toward the end of the play. Double wing formation for Hartford. Clayton under center. Handoff is to Genders. Genders along the right side, around the right edge of the formation. Gets maybe a yard, maybe two on first down. It's going to set up second and nine for the Orioles. So just under 320 now left here in the third quarter. 21-10, Suns on the Orioles. But Hartford is on the move here in the second half. This is their first possession of the, direct, of the second half, and this is their 10th play on their first possession of the second half. Here's Clagey, fakes the handoff, drops back to pass, and almost picked off on the far sideline. Looked like he was trying to hit his, um, his tight end, Sean Winkleman. But good coverage on the back end by the Suns. And knocks that pass away. And it's now going to be third and nine for the Orioles with 2.57 left in the third quarter. Hartford, two of nine on third down. So three receivers to the left, one to the right. Clagey in the shotgun pistol formation. Got one back right behind him. East looking like they might show pressure. They don't bring it. Now Clagey draws back to pass. He throws to the right side. Good coverage, but a great throw by Clagey. 
So Dane Miners is with the reception. So a 30 yard pass completion for a touchdown. Be interesting to see what Hartford decides to do. It's 21 16. Do they try for the two point conversion to make this a field goal game? Or do they try just the extra point? They're going to trot the field goal unit out and try to make this 21 to 17. Here's the snap. Ball's down. Kick is up, and it is good. Your new score after a 30 yard touchdown pass for the Orioles. It's East 21, Hartford 17, 250 left here in the third quarter. You're listening to High School Football on your community station for local news and information, 104.9 WTKM, and streaming online at WTKMnews.com. This is Tim Perman, president of Forte Bank. As your locally owned and operated financial institution, we've been cheering on the community for more than 100 years. When you bank with Forte Bank, your money is reinvested back into Washington County to support your favorite local businesses and community initiatives. With locations in Hartford, Slinger, and Richfield, our entire crew wishes all local athletes good luck this season. Forte Bank, your community bank, your opportunity bank. Member FDIC. High School Sports on WTKM-FM Hartford. Back here in West Bend, we have a new score, courtesy of a 30-yard touchdown pass complete to Dane Minerts. It's now East 21, Hartford 17 with 2.50 left here in the third quarter. Terrific drive by the Orioles, a 10-plus play drive that covered more than 80 yards, a couple third-down conversions, but the 30-yard touchdown pass is what finished it off to Dane Minerts, and it's 21-17 East with 2.50 left in the third quarter. Hartford ready to kick it off back to the back to the Suns. The kick is up and away, high end of the ring kick. Ball is fielded at the 7, dropped, then picked up by the Suns. Moved up to the 20-yard line, trying to get up to the 25, breaks the tackle out close to the 30-yard line. That's where he's going to go out of bounds. That was Bo Stern with the return for the Suns, a return of about maybe 22 yards. Gets the ball up to the 31-yard line for East, and that's where the Suns will start their second drive of the third quarter. First and 10 at the 31-yard line. And next broadcast here on 104.9 WTKM and online at WTKMnews.com is Thursday night when the Orioles host the Highlanders of Homestead. Pre-game 6.45 kickoff right at the top of the hour at 7 o'clock. Full house backfield for the Suns. There's the snap, hand off, up the middle, over to the left guard, a little push up the middle, across the 35 to the 36-yard line is the Suns. And Cutler Schmidt gains about six, maybe five or six yards on first down. It's going to second up, second and five for the Suns. 223 and counting, left air in the second half, or excuse me, in the third quarter of the second half. Again, full house backfield for the Suns. Carlson under center. Snap. Handoff is to the far back. Over the right side of the Suns. Pushing the pile to the right side. Good job by East on running the, the football on that play. Running back just got right behind his hey, big hog mollies on the right side, and they just pushed the line all the way across the 40 to the 45-yard line. That's Cutler Schmidt with the ball carry. Gain of about 12 yards. That's going to be a first and 10 now for the Suns at the 45-yard line of the Suns. Under two to go left here in the third quarter. 21-17, East with the football and the lead. Full house backfield, Carlson under center. There's the snap, got a pulling guard. And the Orioles read that very well, get the push up front. They're gonna drop the Suns back for a two, three yard loss. So that's Caleb Shep, the ball carrier again. Gets close to the line scrimmage, but they'll arc him actually for a loss of a yard. 120 left here in the third quarter. 21-17, Orioles trail the Suns, but the Suns have the football. Just the second possession for East here in the second half. They started with the ball, too. Carlson, Hunter Center, full house backfield. There's the snap. Handoff is to the back. And no play there. They got to the line of scrimmage, maybe. Good pursuit and good push up front, and we do have a player down for the Suns. Can't quite make out who it is that's down. He's down at the 40-yard line. 
They're going to mark him actually for a gain of a yard. So it's going to set up third and 10 at the 45 yard line as they attend to the injured East player on the side. We'll take a quick break. You're listening to High School Football on your community station for local news and information, 104.9 WTKM, and streaming online at WTKMnews.com. Zern Building Products has been Wisconsin's trusted and reliable supplier of quality building materials since 1953. Family-run and passionate about creating a new standard in the trade. And thanks to your loyalty, what started as a team of just five has grown to over 200. You'll find our four expansive lumber yards complete with spectacular showrooms across Wisconsin. That's Allenton, Cedarburg, Franklin, and Watertown where we're proud to build on our reputation for excellent service. Take a step inside. Find us at Zerns.com. Finding that missing shin guard. Remembering whether it's a home or away game. Getting the right kid to the right playing field on the right day. Why are simple things sometimes so complicated? Thankfully, with auto owners, insurance doesn't have to be one of them. We work with independent agents who keep insurance simple so you can worry about more important things. Like not being that fan. Oh, come on, ref! That's simple human sense. Call R.S. Semler and Associates Insurance in Hartford at 262-673-3160. On Twitter, Facebook, and on the web at rsemler.com. Small enough to know you, big enough to serve you. Eastside number, Eastside. We have the knowledge and experience. Working for you, it's the Eastside difference. Here to help you build with confidence and pride. Quality products are here at Small enough to know you, big enough to serve you, Eastside Lumber, Eastside. This is Matt with Schnorberg's Floor Covering in downtown Hartford. Here are some reasons you will want to shop at Schnorberg's. We're family owned since 1954. Three generations of experience covering all kinds of floors. 12-month interest-free financing. We're all about saving you money. Our installers are all in-house employees, no subcontractors. You want installers who take pride in their work. We've got them. We allow you to take large samples home with you to really let you feel and see each sample in your space. You want flooring experts who are ready to help you when you walk in the door. You won't have to try and find someone that probably doesn't know much about flooring like at the big box stores. We're located in downtown Hartford, a short drive from anywhere in Washington or Dodge counties. We proudly carry many products made in the USA. We also have pet-friendly flooring for you pet lovers. Stop in today. We've got even more reasons for you to shop at Schnorberg's Floor Covering in downtown Hartford, where you'll find family-to-family flooring solutions. High School Sports on WTKM-FM Hartford. Uh, Back here in West Bend, it's 54 seconds left here in the third quarter. The Suns lead 21-17. Cutler Schmidt is the player that was identified as down, and he is still down at the 40-yard line. Looks like they have made a call for a stretcher, so hopefully he's going to be okay, but it looks like, unfortunately, his night's going to be done, but uh, hopefully it's nothing too serious. So he is still sitting uh, and laying down on the 40-yard line. He has not gotten up yet. So while we have this uh, break, let's, uh, we'll try and get you some score updates. Uh, first in Major League Baseball in the seventh inning, top of the seventh inning, the Brewers lead the Yankees 5-2, to two, so go Brewers. Otherwise, other scores from around the North Shore Conference. Still 14-14, Slinger versus Cedarburg. That game is in Cedarburg. Uh, Whitefish Bay still holds a um, a uh, 21-3 lead in that one, and still 13-7, Nicolay on Homestead. Right now, uh, both teams on their sidelines are on uh, on their knees and hoping that the, the news here on Cutler-Schmidt is going to be okay. Um, again, it looks like they have called for a stretcher, but it doesn't look like they have gotten it out there yet. Unfortunately, um, we weren't able to see what happened, but again, hopefully he's okay. So um, just want to give you an update on some of those camp- broadcasts we have coming up here on 104.9 WTKM and online at WTKMnews.com. Uh, the next broadcast is Thursday night. The Hartford Orioles will host the Highlanders of Homestead. Again, that's on Thursday, not Friday, so six days from today. And, Nick, it looks like we've got another uh, another great game coming up here. It's going to be Hartford Hartford at Cedarburg. That's going to be coming up here on uh, Friday. That will be uh, the 22nd. 
um, September 22nd. And, of course, uh, we've got uh, Hartford back home then again to take on West Bend West. Tom Jeffrey will be on the call for that on September 29th. Then uh, Hartford at Slinger. That's going to be the coaches versus cancer game. That's always a uh, super popular game with uh, the Hartford Orioles and the Slinger Owls. Jared Bubles will be on the call for that one that evening. So, of course, a lot of passion between the coaches um, for that game that night uh, on the uh, October 6th. And it's a great fundraiser. They raise a lot of money for the uh, for cancer that night, yeah, too. Yeah, absolutely. So. The atmosphere for that is just fantastic. Both communities really come out, not only support the guys and the teams on the field, but also the cause as well. So it's a, always sure. a great night to come out for the coach's first cancer game, like you said, raises thousands of dollars every single year. And uh, Nicolay then uh, wraps up the season on uh, October 13th. Uh, Hartford and Nicolay that's ho- at home. And Tom Jeffrey will have the call on that game uh, that evening, too. So that's uh, kind of a rundown. You talked about it. Uh, season's half over. Fourth game in, and, you know, we're yeah. moving, moving right along. Yeah, I mean, it feels like just yesterday we just started the game. We were also um, sweating in the press box, and it's a little chilly night. The temperatures have fallen uh, below 60 degrees, sitting at 56 degrees here uh, as we sit with 54 seconds left in the third quarter, absolutely no win tonight. Great crowd in both on um, both the east sidelines here in the stands as well as on the Hartford side of the field uh, as well. But just, uh, again, trying to look through some of the other scores. The only other score we've been able to get updated is now uh, it's in the fourth quarter between Nicolay and Homestead. That is a 13-all score. So a great football game going on between Homestead and Nicolay, and I'm hearing sirens in the background. It looks like they have called for an ambulance, and there's an ambulance right there on Decorah. So that's unfortunately not a good sign for Easton Cutler Schmitz. He is still laying down uh, on the 40 yard line. Uh, both teams on their respective sidelines have taken their helmets off and have taken a knee um, until we can kind of get word again, hopefully. You know, Nothing that, too serious for Cutler. I know he's been having a pretty good game and a pretty good season up to this point for the Suns, but uh, uh, just uh, not a good sight uh, to see at this point. You know, that's one of the neat things about Hartford is if you always look over, you always see uh, Craig Semler, and there's always a rescue rescue uh, at all the Hartford games, home games, which is uh, an absolutely fabulous idea because you just never know. You get the smash them, crash them action here that there's uh, always nice to have uh, the rescue there from uh, the Hartford Orioles there for the game so uh so you yeah. talked you talked about uh you talked about some listeners in saginaw is it true it is is this just a myth here that they're shoveling snow in saginaw michigan already tonight is that possible it's or possible no? but i wouldn't be surprised <laughs> but it doesn't sound like it's <laughs> i know i'd certainly be hearing from uh hearing about it so uh yeah just my father and mother-in-law live in saginaw um michigan if uh, uh, about two hours north of Detroit, and they yeah. uh, they love listening to uh, the high school football that goes on over here. They hear a lot of really good football games here with uh, like the Hartfords and West Bend East and Slingers, and uh, just usually have a lot of good tight tight games. Even when uh, you throw in the the Kewaskums, uh as well here in Washington County, uh, it's just they just enjoy listening to the high school football that goes on over here. Uh, now that they've got uh, grandkids that have kind of uh, advanced out of high school or don't play high school football, so it's a chance for them to uh, still connect uh, to high school football. My father-in-law was a former um, football coach himself. So, um, yeah, but now that looking back here, they have actually driven the ambulance onto the field here. It's parked at the 50-yard line. Again, the player down for the Suns is Cutler Schmitz. Um, and he is still laying down. Um yeah, I mean, if anything, you kind of mentioned about where the emergency personnel is during Hartford games, and certainly when we the, the big thing we all learned from the DeMar Hamlin situation with the Buffalo Bills is you should always have medical personnel within arm's reach, and that is standard at every high school event, especially in football. Um, and I th- and it, it's very important to have that. And, again, it's a, a tribute to the athletic training staff to be able to take care of these situations um it looks like there's a couple of people are walking towards the the where color schmidt is i'm going to maybe guess it could be his parents yeah that's just, just something to mom and dad and grandpa and grandma just do not do not ever want to see in a game you know yeah and thankfully i mean i played high school football i never had a, a situation where i had to have this um 
so thankfully my parents never had to endure this, but unfortunately this is part of what happens not only just high school sports, but also high school football. So um, so we're still holding here, just kind of waiting for uh, them to finish tending to Cutler uh, Schmidt for the East Suns. Um, so we'll take another break um, as they bring out the stretcher um, and load them into the ambulance here momentarily. So well, like I said, we'll take a little break. So if it's, you're listening to high school football on your community station for local news and information, 104.9 WTKM and streaming online at WTKMnews.com. This is Tim Perman, president of Forte Bank. As your locally owned and operated financial institution, we've been cheering on the community for more than 100 years. When you bank with Forte Bank, your money is reinvested back into Washington County to support your favorite local businesses and community initiatives. With locations in Hartford, Slinger, and Richfield, our entire crew wishes all local athletes good luck this season. Forte Bank, your community bank, your opportunity. Bank. Member FDIC. Zern Building Products has been Wisconsin's trusted and reliable supplier of quality building materials since 1953. Family run and passionate about creating a new standard in the trade. And thanks to your loyalty, what started as a team of just five has grown to over 200. You'll find our four expansive lumber yards complete with spectacular showrooms across Wisconsin. That's Allenton, Cedarburg, Franklin, and Watertown, where we're proud to build on our reputation for excellent service. Take a step inside. Find us at Zerns.com. Finding that missing shin guard. Remembering whether it's a home or away game. Getting the right kid to the right playing field on the right day. Why are simple things sometimes so complicated? Thankfully, with auto owners, insurance doesn't have to be one of them. We work with independent agents who keep insurance simple so you can worry about more important things. Like not being that fan. Oh, come on, ref! That's simple human sense. Call R.S. Semler and Associates Insurance in Hartford at 262-673-3160. On Twitter, Facebook, and on the web at rsemler.com. Small enough to know you, big enough to serve you. Eastside number, Eastside. We have the knowledge and experience. Working for you, it's the Eastside difference. Here to help you build with confidence and pride. Quality products are here at Small enough to know you, big enough to serve you, Eastside Lumber, Eastside. This is Matt with Schnorberg's Floor Covering in downtown Hartford. Here are some reasons you will want to shop at Schnorberg's. We're family owned since 1954. Three generations of experience covering all kinds of floors. 12-month interest-free financing. We're all about saving you money. Our installers are all in-house employees, no subcontractors. You want installers who take pride in their work. We've got them. We allow you to take large samples home with you to really let you feel and see each sample in your space. You want flooring experts who are ready to help you when you walk in the door. You won't have to try and find someone that probably doesn't know much about flooring like at the big box stores. We're located in downtown Hartford, a short drive from anywhere in Washington or Dodge counties. We proudly carry many products made in the USA. We also have pet-friendly flooring for you pet lovers. Stop in today. We've got even more reasons for you to shop at Schnorberg's Floor Covering in downtown Hartford, where you'll find family-to-family flooring solutions. High School Sports on WTKM-FM Hartford. Back here in West Bend, um, 54 seconds still remain here in the third quarter. East leads this one 21-7. Right now we've been uh, waiting for a good sign uh, for Cutler Schmidt for East. He's been down on the 40-yard line after um, a couple-yard loss um, on the play. Uh, He's been down for quite a while, I'd say probably at least 10 minutes. The ambulance is at midfield at this point. Right now they're looking to stabilize him and get him on the backboard so they can put him on the stretcher and into the ambulance. Um, So as we continue to wait and hopefully get good news at some point that uh, Cutler will be okay, um, we're going to take a quick look at some of the upcoming uh, broadcast here for Hartford Union football. Uh, The next broadcast is actually going to be six days from tonight. It's going to be a Thursday night kickoff between the Orioles and the Homestead Highlanders. Last check we had of that one is they were tied with Nicolay at 13-13 in the fourth quarter. So that game is Thursday, September 14th. Pre-game at 6.45. Kickoff is at 7. Then uh, the week after that, Hartford is at Cedarburg. Uh, Cedarburg um, was tied 
with Slinger at the last update we have. But that was at halftime, so that was quite a while ago. So, unfortunately, that's the latest score we've got. Uh, that game is on Friday the 22nd, Hartford at Cedarburg. Tom Jeffrey's going to be on the call. Again, 6.45 pregame, 7 o'clock kickoff. Then Hartford returns home to face the Spartans of West Bend West on September 29th to wrap up the month of September. Again, Tom Jeffrey on the call. Week 8, we'll see the Orioles in Slinger take on the Owls in the always entertaining um, game, but also fantastic fundraiser, the Coaches vs. Cancer game. That's on Friday, October 6th, week 8 of the high school football season. Jared Bullets will be on the call for that one. And then to finish off the regular season, Tom Jeffrey will bring you the regular season finale with Hartford against Nicolay. That is on Friday the 13th, so hopefully there's not a full moon that evening. Again, 6.45 pregame, 7 o'clock is the kickoff. Uh, they've rolled the stretcher out of the ambulance. They have, uh, looks like they have secured or stabilized Cutler on the backboard. Now they're going to ready to get him on the stretcher. Uh, and then load them into the ambulance. Uh, again, both teams uh, on their respective sidelines at this point. Uh, East has right now got their, all their helmets off. Some of the Hartford players have all their helmets off and just kind of waiting. It uh, looks like they were uh, getting Cutler onto the stretcher. And Cutler was having a really good game here tonight. He had... Um, Two touchdowns here tonight. He had a five-yard touchdown run in the first quarter that made it East 7-0. And then he added a second touchdown, a four-yard run in the second quarter with 231 left. That gave the lead, the Suns a 21-7 lead. Uh, we're told right now that it, it is a left knee injury uh, at this point. Uh, other than that, we are not able to update you on where we're at on that but uh, now everybody is coming up and so thankfully now Cutler is uh, being loaded and it looks like he may have given some kind of hand signal maybe saying he was okay um, but uh, whatever, it's a left knee injury. It's the only thing we've got available at this point. Now the East is getting into the huddle here on the near sideline. Um, I've been in games where they've taken players off on a stretcher, and especially with your teammate, really hard to kind of refocus um, because your, your number one concern is, is, is Cutler's uh, is health. And you want to make sure that your friend, your brother, that you um, – sweat uh, and blood and sweat and, and all that stuff that you do during the week to get ready for the game, the hours you spend in the weight room. I mean, you, you become family. You really do when you're part of these teams. And when you spend so much time together, it's hard not to feel personal when something like this happens. Uh, so right now, that's what East is working on. It's just kind of uh, I'm sure that he's the coaches are telling the Sens players that uh, Cutler's okay. He wants you to keep going. Probably wants you to try and win the game for him. Uh, and just trying to get the guys refocused. So right now both teams have uh, gone to separate end zones. And they're just going to get a little time to warm back up. We've been on hold in a delay here for quite a long period of time. Uh, I would say probably at least 20 minutes uh, since the last play that was run uh, where Cutler got hurt. So so, again, just the next broadcast here is going to be Thursday night on 104.9 WTKM and streaming online at WTKM News. That's the Hartford Orioles against the Homestead Highlanders. Uh, Jared Bublitz will be on the call for that one, 6.45 pregame. 7 o'clock will be the kickoff. So as we're kind of getting ready to uh, get play back underway, why don't we just take a little, little break and uh, – Hopefully when we come back, we'll, uh, we'll be ready to get this game uh, back underway. So if you're listening to high school football in your community station for local news and information, 104.9 WTKM and streaming online at WTKMnews.com. 
This is Tim Perman, president of Forte Bank. As your locally owned and operated financial institution, we've been cheering on the community for more than 100 years. When you bank with Forte Bank, your money is reinvested back into Washington County to support your favorite local businesses and community initiatives. With locations in Hartford, Slinger, and Richfield, our entire crew wishes all local athletes good luck this season. Forte Bank, your community bank, your opportunity bank. Member FDIC. Zern Building Products has been Wisconsin's trusted and reliable supplier of quality building materials since 1953. Family run and passionate about creating a new standard in the trade. And thanks to your loyalty, what started as a team of just five has grown to over 200. You'll find our four expansive lumber yards complete with spectacular showrooms across Wisconsin. That's Allenton, Cedarburg, Franklin, and Watertown, where we're proud to build on our reputation for excellent service. Take a step inside. Find us at Zerns.com. High School Sports on WTKM FM Hartford. Back here in West Bend, we're sitting at 54 seconds left in the third quarter. The East Le- Suns lead the Hartford Union Orioles 21-17. to We've uh, been on a hold here for quite a while, uh, at least 20 minutes, after uh, what appears to be a pretty scary knee injury for Cutler Schmidt for the East Suns. Uh, he was on the down laying on the field for quite a long period of time. An ambulance had to be brought out. Uh, they just put him on the stretcher and the ambulance uh, just left the field. Um, presumably, I'm going to guess they're heading to St. Joseph's Hospital here in West, just down the road here in West Bend. So uh, certainly uh, thoughts and prayers, and hopefully everything's going to be okay for Cutler. But it, from the word we got is it's some kind of a left knee injury. So right now both teams are on opposite sides, kind of going through a little warm-ups just to kind of get stretched back out after the long uh, holding pattern here to, as they address to, to Cutler. So just want to give you an update in terms of how we kind of got to this point. We're at 21-17 in favor of the Suns over the Orioles. Again, 54 seconds left here in the third quarter. Uh, the first score of the game came with 122 left in the, in the first quarter, and that was a five-yard touchdown run by Cutler Schmidt. That gave East the 7-0 lead. Then in the second quarter, Cutler Schmidt, or not, excuse me, Caleb Shep got a one yard touchdown run. That stretched the lead to 14 to nothing in favor of the Suns with 7.33 left in the second quarter. Hartford got the ensuing possession and needed just two plays to cover 81 yards to get a touchdown to cut the lead in half. The key play on that one was the capper by Reed Genders, a 61 yard touchdown run. That made it 14-7 in favor of East with 7.02 left in the second quarter. Then Cutler Schmidt ended his second touchdown run of the ball game. This one was from four yards out with 2.31 left in the second quarter. That made the score 21-7. to Toward the end of the first half with 21 seconds left, R.J. Thomas for Hartford converted on a 40-yard field goal. That made it 21-10 to in favor of the Suns over the Orioles and that was the halftime score. In the second half, with 2.50 left, a 30-yard touchdown pass to Dane Miners brought the score to 21-17 in favor of the Suns. East now is on that ensuing possession, and that is kind of where we sit right now as we get ready for play here. As the fans here for East are trying to get behind their team after uh, – The Suns players uh, experienced uh, what you don't want to experience ever in a football game is seeing your brother, your teammate, uh, get loaded into an ambulance with a pretty significant injury of some kind. So, again, thoughts and prayers, hopefully, um, for Cutler. Things will uh, work out for him uh, as we get ready here to resume play. So it is third and ten at the 45-yard line for the Suns. And Cutler Schmidt is a key piece for East on offense. He's one of their two leading running backs. So let's see how East adapts to that. So it's two two receivers to the right. Carlson, shotgun snap, back to pass. He throws it long. Good coverage, and it is dropped. That was a very good pass by Owen Carlson. Unfortunately, on that was, could not come down with it. It looked like it, maybe Pierce Rummel was trying to bring that in. It was good coverage on the defense, but fortunately he was not able to bring it in. 
excuse me, that was Cooper Kramer that uh, unfortunately was not able to come up with the reception. So it's fourth and 10 at the 45 yard line. Suns in punt formation. Here's the snap. Low, short punts, and that ball looks like it's going to bounce toward the far sideline, and it is going to be downed at the 26-yard line. So with 32 seconds left here in the third quarter, Hartford gets the ball, trailing 21-17. to 17. I want to thank our sponsors for supporting Hartford Orioles football. Forte Bank, Zern Building Products in Allenton, Watertown, Cedarburg, and Franklin. R.S. Simler and Associates Insurance, Eastside Lumber Company, and Schnorenberg's Floor Covering. First and 10 for the Orioles at, the tw at their own 26-yard line. Double wing tight formation for the Orioles. There's the snap. Handoff is to Genders. Genders hangs a hole. Gets a pretty good gain. Gets across the 30 to the 32-yard line. Good gain on first down for the Orioles. It's going to set up second and four, so a gain of six. Clock winding down to less than 20 seconds left. Hartford may try and rush and get a playoff here as they're quickly into the formation. Three receivers to the left, two, two running backs. Quarterback in the shotgun. Here's the snap. Roll to the right is Cleggers. Cleggers trying to get away from it. Now he gets rid of the football, and is that a catch? Yes, it is. That is a beautiful crossbody throw by Cleggers to number 25. That is R.J. Thomas. What a beautiful throw that was, and a beautiful catch. Get his feet in bounds. First down at the 49-yard line. One second left here in the third quarter. It's first and 10 for the Orioles at their 49-yard line. Double wing formation for the Orioles. Here's the snap. Counter handoff to the right side. Genders has got a lot of room. He's crossed the 40. First down. He might try to outrun the offense. Cross the 20, 15, 10. He's brought down inside the 10 to the 8-yard line. Gain of 40 yards for, for Reed Genders. Look out. Hartford's got first and goal at the eight. Down 21-17. That is the end of the third quarter. Suns lead this one 21-17, but the Orioles have first and goal when we come back for the fourth quarter. You're listening to High School Football on your community station for local news and information. 104.9 WTKM and streaming online at WTKMnews.com. 